How's it going guys? It's Than from Title Gardens. And as you can probably surmise from the title of the video, we're talking about shipping. Shipping corals is one of the main challenges of operating an online based business. Corals by their very nature are fragile and shipping them across the country is a highly stressful event. It's also very expensive, so it's not something that we really want to be messing up. Hopefully, this video will give everyone an idea of how we package our corals. When you receive coral from us, they will either arrive in a four ounce cup or a plastic bag, depending on the size of the coral. We'll talk about each of these in turn. First off, we'd like to suspend the corals in their containers. The main goal here is to reduce as much of the bouncing against the sides of the containers as possible. Minimizing contact with the side walls seems to help greatly. Now to achieve this, we start with cutting square pieces of closed cell foam. In the past, we would cut out circular pieces with a hole saw, but later learned that square pieces worked much better. Also, square pieces resulted in far less wasted material. After we have some nice square pieces, I punch a hole in the middle using a pen. Most of what we sell are frags, and frag plugs fit nice and tight in the middle of each square. The reason we prefer the square shape to the round shape that we used to use is because the corners of the square anchor to the sides of the cup. The cup can be jostled in any direction during shipping, but because the coral is essentially fixed, there's practically no risk in it flipping upside down or ever coming in contact with the sides of the container. Here's what it looks like with an actual frag of Blastomusa. As I mentioned, it's pretty snug in there. We then slap a label on the cup, which helps us as well as our customers. As soon as you touch some of these corals, they tend to shrink up right away and they can be hard to identify. The labels really help in that regard. In theory, this cup should be ready to go, but we like a little bit more peace of mind. It's very unlikely for a cup to leak or crack in shipping, but anything is possible. Here is where our new favorite toy comes into play. We picked up a bag stapler, which has saved us a lot of time and calluses on our fingertips. Rubber bands are fine to use, but once you've bagged about 100 corals or more, they can get your fingers pretty raw. A single pull on this lever puts an aluminum staple in place that's watertight. At this point, it's more likely for the back of the bag to burst than the staple giving out. Obviously, not every coral is going to fit nicely in a four ounce cup. Some of our larger pieces are going to have to go into bags, but our packing principles stay pretty consistent. We try to minimize contact with the bag itself and triple bag the corals to minimize the risk of the bag breaking or getting punctured by a sharp piece of coral. Sometimes we are lucky and the large piece was mounted to a frag plug that we can use to attach it to a float. When that option isn't available, sometimes the rock itself can be rubber banded to a float. Sometimes, however, a piece of coral simply cannot be floated so it goes into the bag as is. One thing to note is that we don't pack the bags too tightly. There can be some expanding and contracting as temperatures in the box change, so we want to avoid a situation where the bag expands and then bursts. Just like the cups, we slap a label with the name of the coral on it. Winter is the busiest time of year in the reef aquarium hobby, which means we do the vast majority of our shipping when it's cold out. To do this, we send our corals in an insulated box with a heat pack. The heat pack is iron based and starts an exothermic reaction in the presence of oxygen. A typical heat pack will quickly heat up to over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The goal of a heat pack is to warm the air in the box kind of passively. You don't want the heat pack sitting directly on a bag of coral, for example. The best way I've found to keep the bag to itself is to tape it to the lid of the box. One last thing about heat packs. Remember when we took all those precautions to make sure that there's no leaks in either the cups or the bags? It's more for the heat pack than the individual coral. If a heat pack gets wet, it stops the reaction. So a single leak could cause the entire order to lose heat, which would be terrible. Sometimes though, 
it's just too cold out even with styrofoam coolers and heat packs. It's simple physics really, they can only keep a box so warm. So if the outside temperature is in the single digits, or worse yet, below zero, we will not be shipping. Finally, I should point out that we include a pamphlet with some acclimation instructions for your new arrivals. In every one, however, there is a discount code that you can use on your next order. Now, most are modest savings, but there's a few floating around that are really big. Anyhow, that does it for shipping. I hope you guys have a better idea of how we go about packing corals. So until next time, happy reefing everyone.